Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing great. Uh, welcome to our today's session of Meet the Global Leader. So this session is all about uh, sharing experiences and insights and advice from professionals, uh, entrepreneurs around the world um, with the students uh, who are currently studying um, in Bangladesh uh, universities sector in, in universities. So uh, we try to create awareness among them how they can uh, utilize their student life, how they can um, develop some skills and pursue their career in a good way just after their graduation. So we have uh, invited today uh, Ms. Uh, Priska. So she's a renowned thought leader, keynote speaker and board advisor in tech in the tech industry. So she is the managing director of TechFace, a platform that connects female tech talents um, with cool tech companies and teams helping them find meaningful careers in tech that uh, our audience is going to learn a lot about that in brief. She's also the co-founder and managing director uh, of Skills Finder, a digital solution that helps companies uh, find the best fitting resources for their open positions. And with her uh, di diversified in an impressive career, we, our audience is going to learn a lot and we're going to discuss uh, through our webinar uh, so many things in briefly. So Ms. Uh, Prisco, welcome to our session. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Thanks a lot for having me today. I'm looking forward to this discussion. Great. Uh, as you know that our audience are students, so we would like to know about uh, how was um, our speaker's student life. So if you share about how was your student life, what did you do, and if there's a meaningful story to share with our audience, um, that would be great. Mm, absolutely. Well, um, first of all, I might need to clarify a little bit about my um, career. I'm not sure if you are aware in Switzerland, we have this system of apprenticeship, which is quite well known. So I originally did an apprenticeship, so I didn't, I never studied full time. So I first started off with this apprenticeship, which is working and studying at the same time. And then only later on, I did my studies, my bachelor's and master's degree, which was all part time. So I was always working and studying at the same time. And for me personally, that was quite important because I wanted to see what I actually do with all the things I study. So I needed this real life experience at the same time. And that helped me a lot to, to put more into my studies because I, I realized, okay, what I learned now in, in school, I can really um, use in my career, in my job as well. So I think this was one thing for me, um, but I think this is always different. Some people prefer to say, okay, I want to study full time and then go into the work life. Others prefer um, to do what I did, so study and working at the same time. But um, I guess overall, we all know that we never stop learning. We always have to learn. So even if you're studying now, it's not the end of the road. Um, you will start working and you will realize in your work as well that you need to um, keep on learning on the job, maybe do some courses more, some more studies later on. So you will always be learning. Um, but what I really appreciated about my studies is, is talking to other people from other areas from other jobs and also to learn from them what they experience in their work life and of course the, the team um, the teamwork we had how to functioning together in a team how to work in a team how so how to solve problems in diverse teams as well great so you know like students if um, uh, the best way for them to um, develop some skills or learn some organizational uh, introduction or how a business function or organization runs so they can do volunteering work so part-time or even full-time work so in today's mm -hmm. world it doesn't matter if you are uh, studying or if you are already if you have already graduated so anyone can any point start doing work so this is very important to engage with uh, professional or practical works great so you know like um, if you go to it, how do you foster positive and inclusive company culture, especially in a rapidly growing tech environment? Mm, it's it's a very difficult question, and I think a lot of companies are, are struggling with this nowadays yeah. because the easiest way is always to say, oh, I, I work or hire people there who are very similar to me. That's the most easiest with um, 
the less stress you have at work. But it also means you are not learning, you're not progressing um, further, you're not innovative if you think this way. Fostering a culture of diversity, first of all, means to understand who are you, what is your what are your values, what is your um, view on the world, how do you work, and also understand why you don't like to work certain ways or why certain traits and values are not in line with your values. That's the first step. And then the second step is um, search out people who are the opposite of you and, and start talking to them, understand why are their values different? Why do they work differently? What is important for them? What made them feel this way? And foster a discussion um, of understanding, an environment of understanding. You have to avoid situation where you have a leader who just comes in um, and he or, she, um, he or she is basically just saying, this is how we do it. And there is no other way to do it. This is the only right way. You have to make sure that you can avoid such situations. So you have to be aware that there are different characters in the room and you have to understand them. You have to ask them, how do you feel about a certain way we work? How do you um, appreciate or do not appreciate this way? What would make it better for you? And I think this is one of the biggest um, points to learn, to listen to other people, to foster this culture of diversity. Great. Um, uh, great. That is true. And also, you know, like um, there are some certain um, events or story that actually makes us who we are or the position we are holding right now. So can you share um, any of your early career uh, choices that um, helped you being the person here right now? Oh, <laughs> I think what I always did is I was curious and I never questioned myself if I would be able to do it or not. I just went for something where I felt that could be interesting. In some cases, it turned out it wasn't for me. And that was perfectly fine. I just said, okay, I tried. Um, I figured out it's not for me. I learned something out of it. And I didn't pursue this, this way or this career path further. In other cases, I was completely surprised of how much I really enjoyed the new path I chose, um, the way I went. And I think most importantly is always to think about this, the current situation you are in. What would you like to do right now, right there? And not thinking about what might happen in 10 or 20 years i mean of course you always need to keep your future in mind but not thinking if i do x now i know i'm gonna be um for example a manager in 10 years so i just do this even if i don't like it but i might like being a, a manager in 10 years so i go through it for 10 years it's a waste of 10 years then at the end of the day but if you like what you do, you will automatically reach the goals um, you you set yourself in the future. So I think the most important is really think about what you like or try to figure out if you like it. If you don't like it, you can change. You can always change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, overthinking actually uh, create barriers uh, in in front of us, and it it actually refrain us from develop uh, at uh, in what we are doing. So this is uh, true. So um, how did you transition from working in the financial industry to becoming a managing director at TechFace, and what motivated this change? So because mm -hmm. you know, like uh, especially here uh, in Bangladesh as a developing country, uh, or maybe it's common in some other continents. You know, like well, we have a feeling if we start in uh, at uh, on a specific industry, we are not going to we will not be able to move to another industry. You know, industry shift. It's sometimes um, in most cases people are discouraged, or as uh, most people or professionals have no experiences in that uh, industry shift, they say, "Oh no, you cannot," because you know, mm -hmm. like e students will look after them, and so when a professional expert. Professionals say says that uh, oh it's not possible they they believe it but mm -hmm. uh, if you sh reflect some shade on that um, uh, based on your experience uh, about your transition on your experience that would be mm -hmm. helpful mm, absolutely yeah and um, I think the 
I did two transitions, more or less. The first one was, as I said, I did a, an apprenticeship, which was a, in the medical space. I was a medical laboratory assistant, and then I became an application engineer in the finance industry. So that was already a huge switch. And the second one was from financial industry to being an entrepreneur in quite a different area, which is also a huge switch, but it was maybe a little bit um, different. Um, in general, I think for me, it was really the motivation was I wanted to do something different, specifically when I went into entrepreneurship. There, my def my motivation was I didn't want to be, um, let's say, controlled by someone else. So <clears throat> I always had in the finance industry, I had managers telling me what kind of pro project I should do. They stopped project because there were no money, no interest in or they pushed all the project where my, I might not be interested in, but it was my task to fulfill them. And I realized I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to be my own boss and having the freedom of making decisions of what do I want to work on and what do I don't want to work on. And that was my motivation to leave the finance industry and try something new. And it wasn't easy. It was very hard. I had to learn a lot of hard lessons, but they made me what I am today. Um, but I think it's it's very important that you, as you said also before, don't let yourself hinder from what you don't know or that someone else is telling you, you know, you can't transition into another industry. And also transitioning in another industry would also mean start with um, investigating first into this industry. Um, don't expect, it was very, I was very lucky that I could do this switch um, so quickly when I went from medical laboratory assistant into application engineering. It was a lot of luck or yeah, not a lot of work to be honest. There was luck behind, but it was also me being curious and reaching out to people and connecting and understanding what is happening there. But if nowadays, we thanks to the internet we have access to so much information so if you want to change industry start investigating the industry and figuring out what do you like about it um talk about it find connections in the industry um find events networking events in this industry that helps you to understand how can you get the foot into the door of this other industry so I think there is a lot and specifically in the tech environment because tech per se is not an industry it's everywhere in all the industry and that allows you to switch industry quite easily absolutely and whenever people uh, they have professionals they have skills they have transitional skills they can easily you know like uh, work in another uh, industry it doesn't matter so if you tell us about your uh, organization, TechFace, what it does and how did you come up with this idea and also how, according to you, how it is creating impact in others' life, it would be great. Absolutely. Let me start with how it um, <clears throat> started. And when I left the finance industry and started with SkillsFinder, at the same time, I started building up a nonprofit organization in Switzerland called Girls in Tech. Um, I came from the tech space. I met my co-founder at an event and she started talking to me about being a woman in tech and what she experienced. And we realized we have quite similar experience as, as being a woman in tech, specifically in, in Switzerland. It's a very male dominated area. And then she asked me um, if I would be interested to build up a community in Switzerland to support the women in the tech space, because she felt that there wasn't much happening in Switzerland. She was just coming back from the UK. She was living and working in the UK for some uh, time, came back to Switzerland, and she thought we need to build up these communities to really strengthen the diversity, the gender diversity in Switzerland. And so we started with Girls in Tech Switzerland. It's a global nonprofit organization. And we started the chapter Switzerland. And throughout the first year, we realized that there are actually a lot of women who are already working in the tech space, really interested working in the tech space, but they're just struggling finding a way in or developing themselves further in this industry, in the tech industry, because they missed the place to connect, to exchange, to support each other. And most of them did tell us they were sometimes the only woman in the team or even in the department of tech um, the teams and departments. And so 
we started with girls in tech and over the time we realized that it's not enough because at the same time we got the feedback from the company saying oh we would love to hire more um female tech talents but we can't find them we, they don't apply for our jobs and this is where we realized that it's not enough what we do with the community we have to go a step further and we have to work closer with companies to really increase the diversity in the in the tech industry and this is where tech phase started so it was a slow progression where we said okay what what is it what is required to go the step further from the community and so we started building up tech phase and so with tech phase we're working already six years here in switzerland and there was um, quite some changes of, of how we want to run it um, we tried different things to see what works what doesn't work we had to stop certain things, unfortunately, with it, which didn't work, but we picked up new ones. And we are today, we are very well set up with basically three pillars. So one of the big things we do is we organize um, a yearly conference, which is called We Tech Together Conference, which is bringing together all the female tech communities in Switzerland with the companies who are focusing on increasing diversity and inclusion in their tech teams. So it's a yearly conference where we can connect, learn about technology, what's happening in, in the tech world, but also have hands-on experience. The second pillar is recruiting. So we have the platform, which we build actually for Skills Finder, but we are using it mostly now for tech phase, where, we, um, where it's the opportunity to build your profile based on skills and expertise, and companies can search based on skills and expertise. So it's more a forward-looking search rather than backwards with just a CV you have looking what you have done in the past, but it's more the question of what are your skills that will help us in the future as a company. And the last pillar, the third one, is the... Um, the consulting so we work closely with um, companies we give them the outside in view and help them to understand how do they appear as a company for female tech talents and what needs to be improved so that female tech talents will feel attracted to apply for the company as well so this is um yeah how tech face works today Absolutely. That is great. You know, like um, we as a uh, non-profit volunteer organization, we also um, work with women empowerment. We welcome women, fem female students as well as male. Um, also, we are uh, trying to foster women entrepreneurship in Bangladesh as well. So 95% mm -hmm. uh, of all our professionals, entrepreneurs, investors, students that are connected with uh, School of Entrepreneurship Development are female. And we, you know, like it's not about male and female, but there's some, you know, like stigma, and there's some, um, you know, like connecting with or less connection with opportunities. When so, there's a platform that actually uh, facilitates anyone can be any any person. They, uh, it doesn't matter male or female. They can start anything. They can do anything if they have knowledge and proper skills. So. Mm -hmm. There is all the great things that um, whatever uh, you are doing and the impact is huge. And, uh, you know, like by doing that, um, according to you, what do you, uh, what do you think regarding female participation, especially uh, in, in tech uh, startups or in tech area uh, industry? Uh, if you suggest um, who are listening or going to listen to this webinar, um, how students who are currently at universities can you know like more engage with tech in a tech world and come up with ideas and start their own venture? Mm, yeah. If you give some solution. <laughs> sure, absolutely. I think um first of all, it's like starting your own venture is, is not that easy. It's not that you get up in the morning and you think like, oh, now I have the amazing idea and start my venture or start my company and it's gonna succeed you will iterate a lot. And I think this is where you have to start. You have to try different things. You have to investigate different things. You might have an idea and then you can just go along, tag along with this idea, talk about it, um, try it out in a small, safe environment, in a sense of safe that you're not gonna lose everything you have, that you don't need to invest immediately everything you have. And that's the only thing that, that gives you life. But try to find small environments, test the things, um, 
theoretically, um, it could be just with discussion with people or so before you really put everything onto it and say, okay, I think this is a, the idea that's going to work. I'm going to go through it. Um, this is this is a, a thing you can do to figure out how do I become an entrepreneur. On the other side, to get into the tech industry or to be up to date on what is happening, just keep yourself informed all the time. Find some newsletter you like to read about, find some websites who are always having updates on, on technology, the latest. Um, there's so many, there's so much information out there. Build yourself this little channel. channel. Um, you can use AI to, for this as well. That feeds you on a daily basis with topics you are interested in. And then you see what is happening and you might see an area you feel very attracted to and you feel like, oh, this is where I want to go in. There is um, something that reflects my values as well. And I can see I can bring um, impact there. And then you can start digging deeper into this area. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, like uh, in today's world uh, of full of opportunities, it is very much uh, it, uh, just, you know, like people who want to start a venture, their wish to be a successful is very important. Um, so the, there's so many ways to learn and do business. So by putting all the things together in a better way, anyone can, you know, like uh, be successful. They have to stick to the towards with it. You are mm -hmm. also a startup coach. Um, so. Mm -hmm. In terms of professionals or entrepreneurs, or it can be students, like uh, mentorship or coaching, how do you see it? And especially how important it is for students to seek mentorship or uh, yeah, to succeed after their graduation? Mm. Uh, it's very important to have mentors. Uh, and I think it's, I say mentors with an S, um, find different mentors. and. Mentors, it's kind of an official term, but a mentor could be even so be someone who just you meet regular on a regular basis, having coffee and exchange. It could be someone from your personal environment and you feel comfortable approaching these people with questions you have around your career or your studies or how you should proceed and you feel comfortable discussing with them. A mentor can really be someone you wouldn't officially name as a net mentor or you go through a program where you get matched with mentor. That's not necessarily the case. This is one way to go. The other way is really find people in your environment where you feel comfortable with. And I think it's very important that two things learn from people who have more experience than you that maybe have gone through all the things you are going through right now. And the other thing could be also someone who is the same age as you or the same in the same situation as you where you can um, be on eye level and exchange on what you experience on eye level or maybe it's a different um, industry a different study topic that you can share on on this level and it could be also that you mentor each other not only that some per one person is the mentor for you but you might be also a, a mentor for this person because you can exchange on on what you experience but I feel it's it's very important to have mentors don't feel you have to go through it alone you can always reach out to people and ask for help and that you will you will be surprised how many people will be um, op open to help you at all absolutely and you know whenever people um, especially students um, hear about say for example technology technological not all but some percentage of the students um, uh, ai and other stuff the mostly non business backgrounds Mm. Sorry, yeah, non, uh, so mostly from business backgrounds. Yeah. So, how do you think, like, uh, especially uh, when people think about uh, technology, they say it's so difficult, they have to know programming and coding and stuff. Um, according to you, if uh, students or professionals from business background, can they, can they start a venture in technology, uh, in tech, tech startup? And uh, before start any tech venture, uh, what do you suggest um, that whoever the owner is or founder is, uh, what should they, you know, like consider before starting um, uh, any tech startup? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the 
one of the things today is there is not much more new invention in the technology um, from like real hardcore technology like AI or blockchain. It's, there's not much more coming new coming out. The new stuff that is coming out is coming mostly from research. So if you really deep into a deep tech technology in, in research area, then you might find um, new kinds of technology. What is important right now is how we use technology in our lives. So it is actually the business background you need. The development itself is like, I would say 90% or even more of the, of the um, uh, tech companies are not inventing new technology. They're just using technology for new business models. And I think this is, is the important part. So coming from the business side, is very important also for founding a tech company. And then the other thing is find yourself someone who has the tech knowledge. And, and also there, it's, it's just the understanding of what is technological possible and what is maybe not so easy. I usually say everything is possible. It's always a question of time and money, but everything is possible. And um, I think that it's, it's, it's quite important or it's quite useful to have the business background to see if something is working in business and how do you build up a, a company, a tech company um, to be successful at the end with this tech company. So um, before you get started is what you need to think about is do I have all the information I need to make sure this company can be successful? Am I sure this can be successful? Is there a need for the solution I want to provide? And this is a very, very important point. Often we end up with having a great idea, which we think everybody wants. And you might talk to a couple of people and everybody thinks like, yeah, 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 it sounds like a great idea. You go for it. But at the end of the day, there is no need in the market for this. So most important part before you start the business is make sure you have clarified and confirmed there is a need for your solution you would like to provide with a tech company. Absolutely. So background study, you know, like or preparing before starting a venture is very important, you know, like with great preparation and planning is very important. Team members, they're also important. And um, how do you think uh, regarding uh, students, um, whether they want to pursue a professional career or, you know, like uh, start a venture. So uh, according to you, as you also, you know, like um, uh, match talents, work with talents, what do you think students or while they are studying, how they develop skills and prepare themselves before graduation for um, their next uh, future career? How mm. they should prepare skills wise and knowledge wise? Mm. Um, skills wise, I think w one good thing is always you mentioned in the beginning is like um, internship, but also volunteer work. So look around your area. Is there something where you can contribute already now while you're studying? Um, maybe even you're not earning any money, but it's really getting more, you're getting the skills you need. So there is maybe a volunteer club where you can organize events, where you can manage their books. Maybe you can um, support within the family something that helps you to build up the skills. The second part for knowledge and skills is you can do a lot of online programs. Some of them are even free or you just have to pay a little bit to get the certificate. So you can always study online and see what else is out there where I can um, learn more about it. And the last one is um, that you want to have or that you build yourself a project. So spe especially in the tech industry, if you want to learn coding, you can start building um, maybe a website for your personal use. You can start building up your CV on the website, make it nice looking, make it interactive and use programming language for this. Learn it online. Um, use this kind of little projects and never forget to add this project also to your CV to when you apply for jobs and, and, and show people what you do outside of studying that helps you to build up the skills, keep skills and get more knowledge. Okay, and you know, like people say who are, um, you know, like working in uh, tech startups, uh, they mostly, you know, like uh, engage uh, with their work or with their startup. 
but according to you how do you um balance your work life um uh, work and personal life because mm. you know like in most cases because we mostly stay awake and we especially in, if we consider the students life in bangladesh that we stay they actually stay late sleep less and mostly engage with different activities um mm. so for you know like um people who are with tech startups um they f- they think that it's um, they have to stay awake most of the time uh, it's so tired some work yeah, so much work because you are active 24/7 so mm. y- this misconception is also among students is there so t- tell uh, if you share your experience how do you balance your personal life and your uh work yeah, like uh, entrepreneurial life that would be great yeah um i i used to say there is no work life balance there is work life harmony um i might be privileged and lucky that i do something i really love doing which doesn't feel like um hard work at the end of the day because it's it's it, i do I, i usually say i i work every day and i have free time every day everything is the same for me because i i love doing what i do so there is no big differentiation but i understand that this might not be possible especially in the beginning of the, of your career um that when you still try to figure out where you want to go i what i do um to really make sure it's i can recover from work is i focus on something that has not much to do with work in my case it's sports it, when i get stuck at work and that could be in the middle of the day that i don't know how to proceed or i i can't really find the motivation right now to do a certain task which i'm fully aware i have to do I just step away from my desk and and go running or biking or hiking or anything I just take this break and I can tell you it's giving you a lot more energy and you'll be faster you will be more efficient afterwards than trying to push yourself Absolutely. through for hours and not getting to what you want to do so take this time to step away even while studying sometimes it makes such a huge difference to just go for a 15 minutes walk and then come back and and start over again and don't feel bad about it you're not you're not your brain is not capable to work 24/7 so take this time great and you know like um Uh, we sometimes are uh, reading things about um, ethical technological um, ethics in technological startups or st- stuff so with the rapid advancement of technology what ethical considerations do you believe are most important for tech companies to address mm. it's it's a very difficult to- topic the ethics in technology um I also believe everything that does good is also used for doing bad. Um I think for companies it's very important and it will be more and more important to think about how do how does the technology they develop impact the world. That could be something that could be super useful for certain kind of people or a group of people but it harms a lot of other people and and you see it on a daily basis happening especially also in the ai like i know there is um, a lot of ai tools um everybody think is great but at the same time those tools are discriminating other groups and minorities and we are not aware of it and i think for companies it must be more and more um, necessary mandatory that they think more about the ethical back or the ethical impact of of what they are developing i also believe that the the world the people using technology will pay much more attention to this they will stop using technology that is not ethical and um that will hopefully bring more pressure to the company so the sooner they realize this and react to it um the more they will be win be winning on the winning side for the people as well but i'm fully aware it's not going to be um perfect in the world for everyone and and this is we have to live with this but we can do better than what we do today great we are uh, almost um, at the end of our session but uh, with one question um when do you uh, when you hire um uh, any 
like uh, stuff employee in your uh, company so what talents or skills you look for among them mm. it's a good question um i think for me it's a lot to do with also understanding why they took jobs in the past what was the reasoning for taking it did they see any connection to the job to the company or was it because it looked good on the CV, because it was supposed to be like this um, uh, for their career as well. That's something I'm looking out for. And then it's also understanding the way they think, how they solve problems, how they approach problems. Um, maybe less on the topic of, do they bring the right experience um, that I'm looking for, the right um, hard skill, I would say. I'm more focusing on the soft skill because I believe speci specifically in, in technology, there's so much change is happening. You can learn a lot. And if you give people the space and the time to learn, if they have the right soft skills, they will be the best employees you will ever have. And so I think for me, it's soft skills, but I know um, it's not for everyone like this. <laughs> I can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, great. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Miss Prisca, uh, for your time and, you know, like the uh, small discussions and uh, very to the point inputs and sharing of your experiences with us. Um, because the profile you have, it will take hours to discuss all the things, but uh, through this webinar, we try to uh, very basic things um, that is um, easier to understand for students. Uh, but, uh, you know, like people like you, based out of uh, your busy schedule, uh, giving time and contribute with information and some resources, lessons with students, it is going to help them to design their career and to, you know, like change, create a change in their thought process. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your time, you know, like on behalf of School of Entrepreneurship Development, uh, I would like to share our sincere gratitude and very best of luck for future endeavors and the way you're creating impacts, uh, especially among girls um, to, you know, like engage them in technology and startups. So, um, so much to learn. And we also, you know, like uh, if any further questions are coming from students, uh, we'll definitely convey those uh, questions to you for uh, sure. replying. Sure, absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me and um, also best of luck to all the students. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day. Bye. Same to you. Bye.